I'd like to talk for just a moment about the noise that this uh, Wangtech 5099 uh, QIC tape drive produces. Um, I found that this noise is consistent even when using an archive 5945 tape drive. And again, you know, we're just using pin 34, excuse me, excuse me, pin 26 <laughs> on the QIC 36 interface, the read data pulse. That's, that's all we're reading on the logic analyzer for the universal QIC reader setup that I've uh, designed here. And <clears throat> there's noise that is produced by this tape drive when the tape is in, but is not produced by this tape drive when the tape is out, even when the tape is not moving. And I thought I would demonstrate that. So here we have our logic analyzer open right here. And uh, the tape is not inserted, but the power to the system is on and the power to the tape drive is on. So if we click Start on the Logic Analyzer Capture, we should see if there's any noise on the line or not. There it is, just a few seconds. And lo and behold, there's no noise. Uh, four seconds, just a high signal, nothing more. Now, watch what happens when we do exactly the same thing, but after we insert the tape. So we're gonna insert the tape. It does its head position initialize thing, and so now the tape is in. Um, I believe that there is a light for that here. Um, pin 34 on the QIC 36 interface is cartridge in. So that signal must be high when the cartridge is not in, and it turns low when the cartridge is in. So watch this light when we insert it. And we see the pin 34 light goes out, indicating that the signal just dropped to low. Okay, that's not the most important thing here. The most important thing here is the cartridge is in. And this is recognizing that the cartridge is in. So now that the cartridge is in, let's do exactly the same thing on the uh, logic analyzer, and let's click the start button to capture. Now the tape is not moving. Again, the tape is not moving. But look at this. Four seconds. Look at all this. What's all this? The tape's not moving, but look at all these signals we have here. We have all kinds of signals here. This is the noise that I'm talking about. So even before, before it starts moving, before the tape starts moving, the hardware is producing noise on pin 26 of the QIC 36 interface, the read data pulse, it's producing noise of some kind, um, even though the tape is not moving. So it cannot be, um, you know, actually reading magnetic signals on the tape because the tape isn't even moving. So it's important to understand what this noise looks like so that you can very easily differentiate it from the real data pulses once there is magnetic flux transitions on this tape in order for you to read. So now we're actually going to go through um, a start and a read and we're just going to look at a little bit of data just to see what the difference is. So now I'm going to um, I didn't, haven't even initialized the tape position yet so I'm going to just initialize the tape position here by hitting the go button on and off. I guess it's more of a switch than a button but you get the idea. Okay, so the tape has gotten itself into position, aligning with the upper and lower tape hole. So now it's at uh, the beginning place where it wants to either begin reading or writing. Great. That's where we want it. So now I'm going to click Start, like I always do, and then hit Go and Capture. Just a few seconds. And I'm going to hit Stop on the uh, Capture, Logic Analyzer Capture, before I hit Stop here. So now let's see what we captured here. Now notice I hit start before we ever started moving the tape. So you would expect to see noise at the very beginning, and you do. Here's noise at the very beginning. I suspect I turned the uh, tape on probably one second after I, started, uh, after I started the logic analyzer capture. So I would expect in one second there to be a little bit denser noise, because then I would expect there to be noise from the actual random uh, magnetic flux transitions on the tape before anything is actually written. 
I don't really notice that much of a difference at all. But the way that I find the first block here with the noise is, let's see, I captured seven seconds. So I like to zoom in to right about here. You see where you can, you can the, the noise is pretty dense, but you can still see these, you know, random openings, these random black areas where there's wider gaps. What I'm looking for is for when those disappear. So I'm going to scroll to the right here a little bit. And we still have all this noise. It doesn't seem to look much more dense or less dense from before to after I started the, the cartridge moving. Now maybe there was a little change there. I'm not quite sure. That looks a little bit more dense at 2.4 seconds than this looks over here at 1.5. So maybe I waited a whole two seconds before starting it. I'm not quite sure. But I still don't see any data yet. What I'm looking for, oh, that's what I'm looking for. Did you see how that just entirely turned white? So all of these lines disappeared. Basically what this says is, here we in this, with this noise, we've got wide gaps and narrow gaps. Well, the wide gaps still show up as these black lines. But when we actually get to a real data block, it's all solid white at this, res, you know, at this zoom level because there's nothing that's nearly as wide as the gaps that we're seeing here because it's real data and any gap like that would be an error. So let's zoom right in and I believe the first thing that we're going to see is some data and we do. Now this is a bad example. This is a tape that actually uh, the first block is missing a preamble. Ordinarily I would expect to see a preamble here um, but maybe this isn't a bad example because all of a sudden you can see the drastic difference between the noise now all of a sudden we have structured data. And so all of these gaps look much more organized, much more uniform, and um, nothing. This is the widest gap in here. This is a GCR 4.5 format on this particular tape. And this is the widest gap in here. And we can see that there's far, far wider gaps and the noise right before that. So this is how I ignore um, all of the noise prior to the data is I simply, as soon as I get to these gaps, I tell it to, you know, keep looking for the data block. And until uh, it sees uh, lots, of, lots of data here, uh, I should say lots of very narrow uh, flux transitions or narrow data pulses, something with a lot less time in between each pulse, it doesn't even think that there's really data there. It just discounts it. And that's how my programs are written when they, uh, when they read the file, the export file for um, for this, and I go through the export file and, and how my programs uh, just look at that at a very basic level in the next video. So uh, we'll go on to that, and thanks for watching.